After nearly three decades in the spotlight as one of Christian music's biggest bands, one might think the Newsboys would slow down a bit. But after the platinum-selling pop rockers added longtime frontman Peter Furler and bassist Phil Joel back to the mix, the Newsboys are breaking ground on yet another era of chart-topping successes, evidenced by the number one debut of their latest recording, simply titled United. In a rare opportunity to interview the entire Grammy-nominated gang, well, minus one tardy Duncan Phillips, Furler, Joel, Michael Tate, Jeff Frankenstein, and Jody Davis are all together to talk about their music, past and present, and converse about what unity means in 2019. This is CCM Magazine's Features on Film, and I'm your host, Andrew Greer. It's true. Okay, let's go with so many newsboys in one room together. I mean, this is a lot of iterations of a band in the same room. It's kind of a living history yeah. to some degree. And I think of how many kind of personalities in front minutes. It's kind of the idea of who's going to get voted off the island. You know what I mean? <laughs> First. It might be Duncan. <laughs> Maybe that's yeah, could what, be, yeah. what happened. But thinking about Newsboys United and that idea of unity, it's even now in the current context of the band's title. Yes. And I look, you know, if I just span the band right here, we've got a lot of diversity from nationalities to races to just even stages of life, ages, family, everything. Yeah. There's a lot of diversity and unity is a tall order, especially in a culture that is increasingly more and more yeah. presently diverse. How would you define unity? What is unity? Getting along a brotherhood under the moniker of love. I mean, um, we're called to love. God said, love him first, the creator, Psalms 100, and then to love your brother, which can be tough sometimes, the more diverse things and people get. Mm -hmm. We all have different personalities, different opinions, different buttons that are pushed by different people. So it's all together, it can be a, a massive mahemic, <laughs> destruction or something special, which I think this is, the Newsboys United. Uh -huh. We're living integration is what we are. Mm. It's odd. Yeah. It's unusual, but it's cool. Mm -hmm. I think it's really fun. I, you know, um, meet people every night. And <clears throat> um, often we do like a signing line, you know, which can be kind of quick and impersonal, but mm -hmm. those brief interactions, I think, with, say, some kid from who knows where, he, who's grown up in a certain way, with a certain people group, and he shakes the hands of a black man, a guy Easy. with long hair, <laughs> a guy with long hair and earrings, and um, uh, uh, you know, a, a bald guy, and you know, just it, 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 just very in. diverse. And I think it's it breaks down. Oh, I don't need to be afraid of of that. I don't uh, need to be afraid. And so it's kind of, I think it's kind of something we didn't really realize would be powerful. Yes. But it is a powerful thing in this day and age where everyone's in their little box and in their little zone, sort of looking at each other and often shaking fists at each other. But everyone wants unity, but mm. no one really knows how to go about it. And I don't know if we do either. Yeah, it's true, just sort of happening. true, Phil. Well said. Well, well said. part of going about it is living it out, right? Uh, no matter if you know how to go about it or not. Is, is, has unity been something that's kind of been intuitive in the band from the beginning, even if it was unspoken? I mean, bands are not known for lasting. That's true, <laughs> very true. Then you put in different personalities, different, again, iterations of a band. I mean, there's been a lot of evolution even within Newsboys. So do you feel like, I mean, I'm looking at some of the original guys, was Unity always an element of, of what you were perpetuating through music? Well, bands are like a tribe, you know, there is a tribal, element to it you know where you've, you're out on the road together you're living together and you're kind of like a team so you go out on a stage and you're mm -hmm. one of your goals is to you know put forth what's in your head and what's what's in your songs and and convince them people mm -hmm. you know so you're kind of doing that together but I think for us what keeps us unified more than anything is probably where we know who we are mm -hmm. and uh, and we're grateful Mm -hmm. You know, there's a, there's a lot of gratitude in the band. You know, we, no uh, we, this is a city that we're in now, Nashville, Tennessee, where you can go down to a restaurant and the waiter is probably a better drummer than you are. <laughs> and uh, so we know who we are, mm -hmm. and so we're grateful. And we know who we're not. And we know who we're not. <laughs> yeah. so. And when you say that, we know who we are, who are you? Sinner saved by grace, not to be over spiritual, but it's true. It's like yep, it's Pete true. and I were coming here today in the car. And what did he say, Pete? You were saying, uh, oh, I was telling Pete how, what he's brought into my life. 
Um, I grew up kind of a bit stringent, a bit mm -hmm. like, you know, hard on people sometimes, even if it was hypocritical. Like criti honest. Just critical? Yeah. Kinda. And Pete is, he, he extends, at least with me and what I've noticed from Peter with the years I've known him, he's a very gracious guy. Like he's very like, he's, he understands, he says, Tate, I forgive because I know who I am. You were saying that people, yeah, that's right. and it's true, and it's like we we get that, then the grace factor becomes a, a a max factor. Well, and if you're able to forgive, then knowing who you are, an element of that is knowing you are forgiven. Exactly. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's biblical too to forgive. Giving much, forgive, you know. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, I read the other day. This is heavy. When Christ forgives, He forgets. God forgives. Mm -hmm. We're supposed to do the same thing. But how often do we go? Oh, yeah, but remember that one time, da 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 da. I'm like, why are you gonna bring that up again? Mm -hmm. Love keeps no record of right and wrong. Yeah, yeah but <clears throat> I, do. I, I do sometimes. Yeah, we do. But we, <laughs> we've kind of, you know, we've been in each other's lives for a good part of a quarter of a century. Yeah. You know, held each other's babies, been in each other's weddings, uh -huh. and those are kind of the high points. But there's a lot of low points. We've uh -huh. seen each other at our best and at our worst, and at the end of the day, we realize we're. We're all, we're all the same. Yeah, you know, we're, it's a marriage of sorts. It is a it is marriage of sorts in, in that regard that you are living the highs and you're living the lows. It's interesting. I've always thought what could be beautiful about a band, even though it's on this elevated platform, it's on stage, and there can, can be a touch of unreality to anything that is in the spotlight, mm -hmm. right? But what can be beautiful about a band is that you are actual an example of community. I think we need examples of community to understand how to interact within our own community and build that. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like you are an example? That, that, that's one thing you can be is community, how to do community, how to exist with the community. We can do that. We can show you how to do that even in a you know, well, you without preaching it. You said the best story, just living it out. <laughs> Experience is the best teacher, I always mm -hmm. heard. And you live it out. Uh, you can't fake the funk. Mm -hmm. It's like, you're on stage is not reality sometimes. I and mean, we just the fact that we're on stage and we're, we're real and we're yeah. interacting. But, you know, you're under the lights, everything's just right. And you can, you know, you can personify whoever, whatever. Uh -huh. But off stage, you're tired, you're worn out, your fifth show in, and, you know, your garage door's broken at home. And Jeff Frankenstein's wife is mad because he didn't fix this or that or whatever. And <laughs> it's you, Jeff. It's always me. Right. You might want to the bus. <laughs> and all of a sudden, all of a sudden, real life hits you, you know. Yeah. But we're blessed to be able to to have. It's, it's like college never ended for us. We we spend more time on the road with each other. Yeah. <laughs> for me, for me, man. We don't marry guys. Yeah. Keep for yourself. Well, for Jody when he's on the road. College, yeah, yeah. Co college is, is in session. But when, you, when you're back home, though, it's like reality issue with friends, family issues, life. You uh -huh. know. So it's it's a bit of both. Jody, what do you think? <laughs> well, I think uh, I think you know whatever, uh, however you know people, what the hell they per they perceive you. Yeah. Uh, you mm -hmm. This is your thing as a ministry. And that they're getting ministered to, and that that's you, that's your purpose, and that's what you're doing. But the truth of the matter is, this is the ministry. It's the that's true. It's the 15 dude. people that hmm. you're with every day, you know, and, and your relationships, and that's where the rubber meets the road. You know, anybody can be anything on stage. Mm -hmm. yeah. So if you're serving each other in that closer knit community, perhaps if we are serving our neighbors, we are actually serving the greater population. Absolutely better. Yeah. Or in some way, because yeah. you can't control everything. Another command, you know. You just you like to dole out the commandments, don't you? Well, is I, he that? I'm sorry, I'm, 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 is that I'm, how it goes? I'm a, I'm a, I'm a pastor's give a rigid, rigid, a, a rigid rule follower. Yeah. I'm not actually. I'm not. Yeah. Yeah. They're, pretty, they're pretty solid. They've hung around for a few thousand uh, years. So yeah. 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 <laughs> they really go wrong. That's yeah. true. Okay, so diversity is not only within the members of the band or even within Newsboys United, but it's also within the context of your discography. So like the Newsboys I grew up with, you know, is more the tongue in cheek, the breakfast in hell, the love, liberty, disco. And then a decade later, you are at, you, you have a significant, significant presence in perpetuating modern worship. That's a pretty unusual transition and even if making that transition is not that unusual, having an audience that is equally into Breakfast in Hell and we believe mm -hmm. is unique. So what was that transition, you know, what motivated that transition? And I'm not saying that's was your that hasn't been yeah. the end game, but it was it has been a significant part of your profile. You said end game. If you go back and look at the <laughs> early records of the newsboys, there was always a song that was sort of a vertical song. You know, on the record, uh, even though the record and it might have had, you know, there was uh, 
there was there was albums like Thrive that had uh, Giving It Over, but it also had It Is You on it. Uh-huh. And so there's always been that thread. With we, you know, we kind of grew up in church, mm-hmm. so we grew up uh, when the Newsboys started. They were they were kind of the worship band, okay. church band, and so. Uh, it was it was just a part of our DNA, so it wasn't really anything forced. It's, uh-huh. it's been very natural. I think really what happened was uh, this thing happened. You know, bands started to do more worship, radio played more worship, and then that probably put a light on us. Like, oh, they're doing that now too. Where mm-hmm. we were kind of, yeah. uh, you can go back to gosh, the '80s with Newsboys, and there's always there's a, some type of worship song. It was almost the. the- trend catching up with you guys in some ways in a way but i think yeah. it was just really it was just us deciding okay well let's put four more four more worship songs on this record uh-huh. because and part of it too was just what came naturally mm-hmm. i don't think anything like was forced i think sure. it's like you know pete what did you play at the house last night the, the, oh what was that one? Oh gosh it was amazing i love this song we're gonna be making them these days <laughs> i can't remember we oh, played pete, a lot of songs come yeah. on uh, uh, was it, this, this, this is your life oh yeah Ooh, this is your life yeah, yeah. this is your life love that song yeah you is know. that related somehow to the conversation? Yeah, it is now. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it just ends. Are we taking it the just conversation ends. somewhere else? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, Speaking of song diversity. Yeah, 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 yeah. I got it, I got it. Well, I do want to continue with that thread, though, because even if it always was a part of the DNA of even you guys individually or uh, the Newsboys, it is something that has really absorbed a lot of the creative space within Christian music, and it can be easy to lose some of the creative license and autonomy because that is now necessary. So I hear you saying it was natural, but was there ever a fear or a hesitation or caution like of getting absorbed in kind of this bigger monster of worship music and not finding, you know, not continuing to interact as the newsboys? Yes. Uh, No, I think it's just, you know, this new record that we're about to put out, there's definitely a couple of kind of more quirky songs on mm-hmm. there. Um, they just kind of came naturally again. It mm-hmm. wasn't, uh, uh, there hasn't, I don't think we're that calculated. Mm-hmm. You know, we just, it's really, the creative process doesn't work that way for us. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, when we wrote Breakfast in Hell, we were, you know, in our 20s, you know, mm-hmm. and whatever, and our minds were different than they are now. You know? <laughs> so, uh, so I don't know, you know, to go back and try and do that again uh, might be a mistake, you know. It's yeah. there and it's it's fun and it's great and that's, yeah. you know, anybody can listen to it anytime they want. But would we do something quirky again, more uh, sort of a pop? Totally, I yeah. would like to, you know, if it just happens naturally. Yeah. Jeff, you look like the youngin' in the group. <laughs> Love for you. Uh, Love for you. Uh, yeah. He's 65. Oh, okay. yeah, so there's a grizzled veteran. You've underneath. just been no, yeah, like, grizzled. pretty face. No, no, don't worry about it. He, he's eye candy. <laughs> <laughs> Rock and roll keeps you young. Yeah. It's uh, kids that age you. That's what I'm. Mean. Oh, yeah. yeah. But you have kids. <laughs> yes. I'm well three. said, Frank. Yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> what's your take? I mean, uh, go with the family man thing, though. And and uh, several of you have kids and families at home. What has that been like? You've spent y'all spent a lot of your life on the road, even yep. if you've been away for a yeah. while and stuff. If you were to, you know, put that together cumulatively, it's a lot. Yeah. You know, and apparently you're not taking out the trash according to Tate. So, what <laughs> is family life like? to be gone as much yeah. as you have to be during the seasons? That's a good question. Uh, you know, you you, um, you make it work, you know? It's not uh, perfect. It's not uh, the, the traditional way you would, you mm-hmm. know, people would think it is. In some ways it's better, in some ways it's worse, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, but like my, you know, I've been touring the entire time I've known my wife. We've almost been married for 20 years. We have three kids. Um, so in some ways they don't really know any different because that's just the way it's always been. So that's normal. Like Mm -hmm. there even was a point where one of my kids (laughs) thought that everybody's dad at school just played in bands. (laughs) And, uh, I was just blessed that like I was doing this long enough that they could actually see dad play and understand it and all that stuff, you know? So, so for that, I'm really grateful. Um, but you know, there are times where you're gone a ton, which is like really tough because, uh, a lot of times people think that if you're in a band and you've had some success that you're just, or anybody who's in the spotlight, mm-hmm. that you're immune to all of life's mm-hmm. problems and that your life is just perfect. In some ways, it can be, uh, it, you are just a person like everybody else with the same family issues, the same 
things you know mm -hmm. we have all that stuff except mm -hmm. that we're gone when they happen mm -hmm. so you you adapt and uh and you make it work but you know there's sometimes you're gone for a lot mm -hmm. after next week we're we've got like a month with no show so mm -hmm. yeah right. working dad could never say that mm -hmm. i'm going to spend the whole summer with my my kids and really get to know them really mm -hmm. well and do all these things that other, other families don't get to do so uh there's good and bad yeah mm -hmm. the when i think about road life and think about the amount of years you guys have spent on the road. Um, did you think that, I mean, this has been almost 30 years. Easy, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> so add up, add it up. But, you know, I mean. <laughs> it's been tough doing it since you were three. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Yeah, exactly. Uh -huh. uh, so um, we don't have to go around and say ages. That's not the point. But did you think that this would you know, actually, that you would spend most of your working life, and this may be the duration of your working life, in this context and profession. I mean, did you think? Oh, absolutely not. In fact, uh, I, Peter was the guy who called me asking if I was interested in joining the band. This was back in like 1993. And uh, I was a sophomore in college, and we had met at a show. A friend of mine was promoting a show, and I was the runner. Um, only because my mom had a great Ast Chevy Astro minivan, so I drove the guys around and met them that day. <laughs> and uh, Peter calls me out of the blue. I'm just a college kid in Detroit living with my parents. And I get home from a class, and, and my mom's like, yeah, Peter uh, Peter called you. For, I'm like, from the newsboys? I'm like, what the heck? So I, I call him back, sure enough. He's like, yeah, we need a keyboard player ASAP. And uh, I stayed home from school for like a week and learned all the songs and drove out to the show that they were doing that weekend and auditioned with the band. They did, they barely remember my name. And, uh, like, I, why are you here? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, totally. And, uh, I played the show that night and I didn't even know if like I was in the band or not or what after the show, they're all getting in the bus. They're like, see you next week in Indianapolis. <laughs> and, uh, it's funny. <laughs> That's we fun. still have the same level yeah. of communication yeah. today. Yeah. Yeah. So much as Jack. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And uh, yeah. I remember uh, I, I went down to my uh, university the very next day and dropped out of college. And then the day after that, I drove to Nashville. And we did, this was 1990, early 1994, and we ended up doing 280 shows in one year. Oh, my God. Went from playing in high school gyms, uh, to you know, opening for Stephen Curtis Chapman later that year, but those first few months I was in the band. Like, yeah, you know, I had never toured before. I was like uh -huh. barely 19 years old. And I jumped on a bus. I'm like, this is never gonna last. Like, I better uh, make sure I got some options <laughs> open. Are, this is the disaster. I was like, <laughs> these guys are crazy. Yeah. So um, to think that you'd be here like 30 years later or 25 shocking. years later is shocking. shocking. But you know, that's shocking. music. You know, if you Jody always says it best. If you if you feel like you know where you're going to be five years from now, whatever that is, you're probably completely wrong. Yeah. <laughs> dead wrong. Yeah. You can imagine it you're dead wrong. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah. you're extremely boring. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have there been some, like, what would be something unimaginable that within the context of Newsboys that you're like, huh? Something unimaginable? The band they need, the band they need tomorrow. <laughs> uh, we do a mariachi rig. <laughs> Gosh, it may happen. Yeah. It may happen. <laughs> yeah, right? Well, I mean, even thinking about Michael being in the band, like, you know, that, yeah, that whole thought, thing that was unimaginable. 10 yeah. years ago was completely yeah. Un yeah. unimaginable. Yeah. And then to think, like, uh, you know, this year, you know, we're both sitting here on the couch together. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. you know. Yeah. And to think that Michael yeah. would work being in the band. Right. I know, yeah. right? Even <laughs> yeah. It was funny. It's crazy. I'm, I'm, I'm going to tell on Toby Mac. Toby said to me a, a few years after, he goes, Tate, I thought for sure, you know, he'll do it for a couple months and he'll be out of there because I'm, I'm ADDDD. I'm always jumping in there. ADDDD. Yeah, that's like the perfect. And Toby goes, Toby goes, I thought when Wes told Toby, he goes, I thought, no, this ain't going to work. This ain't going to work. And then he put up Born Again. He goes, okay, that's really good. That's a good start, you know? And here we are. What, thousands? Can we say a couple thousand shows later? Maybe? <laughs> what, how did, you, how did you perceive it? I mean, were you like, yeah, this will be a, a year long stand? I'm, I'm well, I transition. was told by management okay. that Pete was taking a break and he needed me for a few months. Okay. That was then later realized as the, the, the little bread trail. Little baby. <laughs> <laughs> and, and sure enough, well, it was. <laughs> long he was in the track. <laughs> Peter, Peter, Peter was long gone. Peter sat down to my 20 years of records and making records, doing, you know, doing this voice. He was done. 
But Wesley Campbell, Wesley Eugene Campbell, was like, uh, yeah, just, just try for a wall, I'll tell you to be, you know, see how you fit, see how it all works out. <laughs> and I said, okay, and here I am 10 years later, but having the time of my life. And what's great about it is I needed newsboys, and newsboys needed me. And it was a beautiful marriage. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then we get Peter back. And yeah, did you Bill. ever think you'd be back? Um, I don't know. I didn't think about it that way. <laughs> I, I, you know, I read a lot of, uh, you know, memoirs you know rock and rollers yeah, and, right? and when you read them there's always this weaving story of this uh -huh. so in my mind i thought well this, maybe the story's not over so sure. but i honestly didn't really think about it yeah. you know i didn't think uh it was really i think for all of us it just yeah. phil and i coming was... back was really uh a surprise in fact probably six months to a year before it happened if you'd said it was going to happen we went really how's yeah. that going to happen you know yeah, so, yeah. we asked the same question in europe remember that jeff we were like because it's going to work when west told us in yeah. europe yeah, yeah. <laughs> we were all thinking like Okay, well, 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 we'll try it. Yeah, happens. timing's everything too. I mean, like a year or so before we may have been, uh, no, yeah. was, you know, kind yeah. of busy doing other things. And yeah, no, but when when the idea was floated our direction, we, I think we're both kind of like, yeah, you know, it feels like the right timing and just feels right. Mm -hmm. So I remember going to Home Depot and asking Phil. He want to work with Newsom. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. In the garden, garden department. I remember, I remember going to the stock, the stock, the stock room at the Home Depot, and Bill was back there with his hat on and sweatshirt. Yeah, you know, always sit here. Always sit here. Been waiting for you. All right, so this is a pretty. I mean, this is a fairly like kind of go-to question, but because you have spent so much individually and collectively your lives in music, and then again. In this context of Newsboys, what do you want your legacy to be? Ooh, that's not a power pack question, is it? That we 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 uh we love people well. We used our gift that God gave us. He gave us a talent, and we didn't bury it. Uh, we allowed him to make us conduits to people, and nothing excites me more as I get older. And people coming to us in autograph lines saying, you inspired me, or you were the soundtrack of my life, or blah, blah, blah. It's like those things, when you're younger, you're kind of like, oh, cool, well, whatever, nigga, you know, pass the bread and butter. But when you get older, you go, man, these things matter because God matters. And you either believe it or you don't. It turns out we believe that God's not dead. And we we, we believe, we preach it, we, we, and we try to live it. But the point is, I hope the legacy is that these boys did, you know, they, they fulfill, fulfill the mission, you know, great, well done kind of thing, you know, that's for me, kind of simple, you know. I think it's in the music, you know, it's like people always think that we have some sort of power, well the power's yeah. in that lyric, you know, mm -hmm. it's in that's that right. thing, and so that's already been recorded, There's doc it's documented, you know, so that's the thing, that, you know, a lot of the bands that I've grew up listening to, some of them aren't with us anymore or in different ways, but I, I, their music still mm -hmm. affects me, so that's the cool thing about being a musician and you know being in a band and being writers and artists, you know, you get to leave that yeah. thing. You know, we can listen to Rich Mullins today. Yeah, he's still, Rich right. is still mm -hmm. speaking today. You know, there's different yeah. acts that are still there. So, you know, we've recorded some really crappy stuff, but we've made <laughs> some great stuff too. You know, so. yeah. And I mean, that's kind of music's legacy of unity in and of itself, it's yeah. unifying us other times, places. And I think with people, it truly is the universal language. And for that reason, I think God is all up in it for whatever reason. I yeah, think it totally. is truly yeah. one of the most magical yeah. um, gifts yes. that we've been given that must be resonating forever. It must have always, I mean, I just think we're cap. I think the newsboys are just capturing a piece of it. That's already yeah, a been yeah, that's and right. yep. resonating. Can you hear it resonating? Stirring deep within your soul. Like um, Duncan's music is still with us today. Yeah, yeah. 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 actually, yeah. does someone have their phone in their Instagram feed? Can we put a little close up <laughs> of, see where, that, see where he's at. of that yeah. pool shot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Any luck, Randy? He's probably eating sushi somewhere. <laughs> he's on his way. Okay, great. So uh, Duncan's on his way. We'll miss him this time um, for this edition of Newsboys All Together. United. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All minus one. All minus United. Yeah, yeah, minus one. Yeah, that's right.